<laughs> oh man, that would be so much cooler if I actually had a cat in my lap that I was petting over ever so sinister sinisterly i don't know but hey guys what was that for an intro i don't know buckle up because there's going to be more silliness and goofiness my name is stefan early morning steph because it is about 5 30 in the morning i've got my little shot of espresso my pick me up and it's got a little pun hot stuff yes it's also a little affirmation i am just a shot of hot stuff and so are you guys because you guys are just coming in hot with all those listens, with all those comments, like subscribes, keep that up. It jolts me perhaps more than espresso. So you guys are like my little beans, my little coffee beans. Love y'all. And speaking of love, I really love the new guest that's on this episode, Jessica Watkins. Jessica Watkins. I don't know why I wanted it, but Jessica Watkins, she's a comedian, actor, filmmaker, and she also just released a documentary available on Amazon Prime and loads of other places where you can get it special ish where she ends up trekking across america on foot armed with nothing more than bear spray and she ends up doing stand-up comedy along the way so it's an incredible journey link is in the show notes so you can trot on over or gallop i'm not sure what your pace is you can go on over there and you can watch it and please do we talk a little bit about it some interesting stuff not too many spoilers so we've got some fresh produce that you can munch on with your ears and that's pretty much it show her some support follow her send some love in the dms be like hey love the episode well you don't have to sound like Polly shore but uh, whatever you want to do you guys are just a wonderful little fellowship of the pod oh man Hello, Pessus. I'm going to stop doing that so I don't lose any more followers than this intro has already lost. Love you guys. Just sent a little smooch through the microphone for all you audio listeners. One more. Woo! Test. Test. Oh, I can hear you now. Oh. Okay, hey. sweet. That's all me. Oh, all, all good. My fault over here. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. It's all good. We fi you figured it out in record time. So. Now I know what that knob does on the side of my microphone that I'd been wondering about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it means you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. So I guess in case you just want to like muffle out the other person, then that's what you do. You know what? That'd be great. Just somebody, if they <laughs> ramble on, just press that button and then you can just zone out and do whatever you want. That's I'm great. glad I know now. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen during this podcast, yeah, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, well, it's a, by the way, it's a pleasure to meet you in zoom person. I'm Stefan, by the way. Nice to meet you, Stefan, Jessica. Oh, and pleasure to meet you as well. I uh, am excited to have you on the pod and to be able to talk a little bit about your your documentary special ish. Yes. Um, thanks for having me. And thanks for pronouncing it so well. Oh, I, has there, <laughs> have there been issues with that? It's kind of a tongue twister, but then I was like, okay, maybe that's like, you know, part of the thing is that someone has to say it like several times before they can really get it down. So then, um, then it's fair. stuck in your head, you know, <laughs> fair, you know what? Fair enough. This was not my first time saying it. I was practicing it. <laughs> my wife heard me in my sleep. Special good, special. good, good. So, See, you uh, just missed. I know. I did it too fast. It was like one of those Dr. Seuss rhymes. If you say it too quickly, it's just. Uh. I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, edit that part out with a voice dub where I say it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, <enough>. excellent. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'll just go ahead and intro us in. I am recording, but. Um, we'll intro and then and then we'll just jump into it if that cool. Works for you. Yeah, sounds good. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, your host. Joining me today, very special host. She's a comedian, actor, filmmaker with a new documentary out now, special ish, where she walked across <laughs> America. Everybody, please welcome Jessica Watkins. Thank you Woo! so much, all the people. I don't know you, my body, sometimes it depends <laughs> on the name, I guess. I did a weird head knob. And, I'm into uh, it. I feel like, 
I'm feeling you there. That was good. I'm glad you matched it. So I didn't just look like a goofball, not knowing what he's doing with his body. So thank you <laughs> so much. And thank you for jumping on the pod. I'm really excited to just dive in the deep with you yeah. about all things, including your, your new documentary, which I, I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed it Yay. watching it. I didn't know what to expect. And I guess you didn't know either going into yeah, yeah. Walking, walking Across America. I was going to ask what, um, I guess we reel it all the way back. Mm -hmm. So you started off, lived in Nashville, born in Nashville, went to LA to become an actor, spent five years there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, then, six years there. Yeah. But um, I mean, you know, we all moved to LA, you know, was I to be an actor or to be a star? You know, I mean, we all know what the thing was, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you ended up picking up and getting into stand-up comedy in LA through a class. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, after after school, which was really a cool experience. And the executive producer of the film is someone I met in acting school. And that was now almost 20 years ago. So, you know, with the whole thing about like, I don't know, it's all about who you know or whatever, it's uh -huh. true. And, you know, did going to acting school like turn me into an awesome actor? No, actually it's like, I think it did the opposite, but I did make some cool connections and friends and you, but I did also tune into like the comedic side of things and realize that uh -huh. that's what I really enjoyed. And then, so that just led naturally outside of it to sketch and improv because the, that kind of auditioning was just so much more fun. And I don't know, I just felt like I wasn't like the leading lady or, I, you know, I don't know. And then, um, yeah. And then I took a class doing stand up, and the first time I did stand up was like, oh my gosh, yeah, this is feels so good. Oh you're the, my you're the only person on stage, you know, like no <laughs> you don't have to compete with anyone else. This is amazing. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting because when I was listening to some interviews that you had and, and doing some research, I was thinking, man, I, I know a lot of people go to LA. I'm here in Phoenix, so I'm I feel some of the effects of LA because people come here and move here to Phoenix and then say how mm -hmm. much they love California. But <laughs> uh I was I was wondering. Cause you said, you know, one of the, you met somebody that ended up helping with the film. I, one of the things that I was thinking of was, was it easy to make friends once you moved over there? I didn't know if you had any when you moved, but it sounds like you had no problem making friends there. I mean, I knew zero people. Um, my, yeah, but I, I think school definitely helped, you know, uh, there was a bunch right. of trans, uh, we were all transplants. Um, or at least a lot of us were, except for, um, you know, a few yeah, local, you know, local people. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, one story comes to mind, but we'll save that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that was, I think definitely like when you're 18 and you're moving to a new city, you know, being in that type of situation, it, it was good to have other people that were, you know, in the same like mind frame that you were and it mm -hmm. was everyone was kind of there for the same reason you know you're like all right we have to figure out what we're doing you know how to get famous in the next one to two years while you know we are <laughs> our parents will still allow us to like maybe help us financially to be here you know I wasn't from like a wealthy family or anything but my parents luckily like helped me a little bit while I was there for a few years mm -hmm. and then they were like mm, no okay um <laughs> we're giving you six months and then like, we're cutting you off. <laughs> you're not famous yet what's going you're on you're clearly smoking a lot of weed and why are you <laughs> surfing so much like, <laughs> this is not part of the plan um it helps with balance on stage, mom. Okay. And that it's is so true. And just agility in general. And like, going, you know, you have to be able to react. Oh, that is uh, <laughs> amazing. And, and riding the next wave. So you ended up getting into stand up comedy. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so <laughs> then you ended up moving to New York. And yes. what was what was it like diving into the comedy scene of New York? Uh, really overwhelming. And you know, what's so crazy also is that I, uh, I would, cause I'd been in LA for six years and people, even uh -huh. when I was in LA, they'd be like, where are you from? And I'd be like, no, I'm just from here. I'm from LA, you know, like just with the most Southern, but in at acting school, that was like all part of it. It was like getting rid of the accent and having like a standard American speech. And so I kind of dialed that all back, especially by the time I'd gotten to New York. So I, 
I was like, I'm from LA, which was just such mm-hmm. a weird thing to bring to New York. Cause mm-hmm. like, you're not like, and I'm not from LA. And I, I feel like it actually took me years to kind of uh, dial that back. And I think it was also like Nashville's comedy scene was starting to grow. And whenever I would go back down mm-hmm. there, I would have a lot of fun doing stand up. And then I realized like, oh, like being Southern is part of who I am. And that's, I don't, I can say y'all again. Like, I don't have to say <laughs> you guys or, you know, I can, I don't, it was kind of a realization of like, oh, that's part of who I am. Like I lived in LA for a uh-huh. while. I was trying to really get rid of that it's just for auditioning purposes, I guess, or in that world, that's mm-hmm. how they kind of made you feel when you're going into acting school was, um, yeah, you need hmm. to like dial it all back. So it, that was really interesting. And then, yeah, just yeah, New Yorker is like, it was a very interesting place to come up doing stand-up, especially this is like 10, a little over 10 years ago. So like the alt alternative comedy scene was definitely, you know, going real hard here. And Mm -hmm. it was just a really interesting time to come up. And it was definitely a time where, um, like if you weren't out doing comedy every single night and doing like 10 shows a night and you weren't like, and you didn't also like live out of a box with three other comedians and hated everything that you did. And like, never, I don't know. It was like this intense pressure to like hate everything about existence in order to like be, trying hard enough to be a stand-up comedian and that was definitely around this time when I decided to do the walk I feel like or I mean okay this could also be like totally my own pressure on myself but that's Uh that was my my perceived you know pressure during that time period so I I can definitely understand that and I feel like in 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 a degree of everything uh I feel like there's that oh if you're not suffering to some percent you're not doing it right. Yeah. And, and especially New York comedy, it's it, exactly like you said, from either comedians that I've interviewed or, or see, heard interviews from, it's like, yeah, I was doing this. I was uh, barely paying rent. I had like six roommates. Uh, I mean, just the fact that I had a job, like where I waited tables and I'd be like, like, no, I can't tonight because I'm like, I'm going to make money or like, that would be, you're just like, okay, so you don't want enough. You're like, no, I just don't want <laughs> I just need, I just want to like not be so stressed out that I feel like I'm going to like collapse, you know, or I don't know. Yeah. Makes, it makes total sense. And it just, it it leads to talk about the ending up doing the walk because another thing, and you had stated this as well, I think in the documentary where you were talking about, well, it's, it's also not enough just to be funny where you got to have something. And so you ended up doing the walk and where you end up walking across the country. I think it was from Delaware all the way to Oceanside, California. Yeah. And, and doing comedy along the way. And one of the questions that I had was, was that the first idea that you had? Or were you thinking, what were some of the other things that you were thinking mm. of to be able to, I guess, stand out? Yeah. So I had been in New York five years at that point. So okay doing stand-up for five years. Um, and like there were periods through there where you, you like, you know, you get little windows in and you're like, oh, I see like who's doing what. And you feel like, oh my God, I can't believe I was just hanging out with that person. Or I can't believe that this is all just happening. And then, and then you're kind of like, yeah. oh, right. Okay. I get it. This is just like, like the whole artist thing. Like that's just going to sort of be waves of these things. So you have to, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I say in the documentary, come up with your own whatever. And crowdfunding had just at least got on my radar during that time. And I'd seen people doing really successful crowdfundings. And that was all about, you know, having an idea enough to like inspire other people to want to help you with that. And Mm -hmm. so I don't know, I think I kind of, I mean, (laughs) the adventure comedy aspect, like just kept coinciding and Mm -hmm. I I can't really recall any other like strong ideas I had for the first special but except for that this didn't start as walking across America it started as like maybe I'll walk (laughs) like (laughs) you know like a little bit like maybe I'll walk It was, <laughs> like I think it was like maybe I'll walk through Tennessee or like maybe and then okay. I, and then it was like maybe I'll walk to Tennessee and then nice. and 
and actually no the original i guess was probably the appalachian like i mean i was thinking about these actual like physical part like the appalachian trail or something but i'm like okay that's uh -huh. comedy is not going to be a part of that so then it, that's when it took me to like the road and then I knew this guy who had walked across America one time, you know, I had met him years earlier in LA. We played a game of golf together. He wore a pair of mm -hmm. gold shoes and he played the whole game of golf with a putter. And his name is Aaron Huey. And now he's sort of this famous photographer and he's such a cool dude, but right. I met him years earlier. And so that idea had just stuck around. So I talked to him mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm thinking about doing this. And he was like, I mean, if you're going to walk, to Tennessee like you should just walk the whole thing like what are you doing <laughs> that's I love that it's like don't just do one fourth just do you might as well just do the whole I mean, like, thing what are you doing we're just you know half-assing this so um which I did kind of half-ass it in the end but uh but talking to him and then researching and then realizing that people do this stuff and mm -hmm. you know uh I mean obviously the trails people do all the time and then like the cross-country stuff people do yeah. uh, biking and walking and I've met a lot of people now in this weird sort of you know spider web of like communities that I've come across over the years now that I'm doing the walk it's been very interesting that's so cool it's almost like alumni for doing yeah the walk. exactly exactly totally that's I re like one of the most uh meant so much to me when I, a guy who I've followed for a few years who I, I um, yeah, he wrote a book that I uh, will mm -hmm. tell you the name of it right now because I can't remember it. But uh, the point is that he <laughs> wrote a book that I read and uh, that I took a lot of information from. And he nice. commented recently um, about my uh, film and he was like, honestly, like I've never, like anyone who does this, like it seems super grand, like it seems super grandiose. All the premises of the documentary seem like they're gonna suck, but I actually kind of want to watch yours. And I was like, well, it's, really grandiose it's definitely still <laughs> absolutely an ego driven piece of art however i do think you will enjoy it um but yeah there's a commonality there somewhere i'm sure yeah i love and i love how uh, you know up front you just say it i mean even in documentary you're like i did this <laughs> for me which i mean 99 percent of the things that i do are for me as well uh, yeah and, yeah. and I, and I think it's so cool that you get to share the story of like, I was driven to do this for me. And then I ended up learning so much and, and meeting so many cool people and having so many unexpected things happen along the way. So I, I, I think it's super cool. And the link is definitely gonna be in the show notes. I'll mention this a couple of times. Cause it's so cool <laughs> to go and watch this special, but, or this documentary. And, yeah. uh, but I, I wanted to, <clears throat> so you, you ended up doing the crowdfunding. Yeah. You ended up, how, how much did you end up raising? So I actually did two crowdfundings, one before I left and then one after I got back. And nice. both times, both times I raised a little over 15,000 bucks. So like the first one, yeah, it was somewhere around there. Nice. And that it was like all, all, you know, a lot of that money went into the equipment that I needed, especially for filming. And, you know, so I wasn't just carrying food and water and like all the stuff that a normal hiker was carrying, but I had these drives that I was sending back to New York and I had my camera and I needed to keep mm. everything charged and I needed a computer to be able to upload everything onto and be able to give the information to the right. editor I was working with in New York. And it, it was like a lot of other moving pieces uh, that I had to the equation. And so the crowdfunding like went toward that. And then there was still money left to start the walk and plenty of money to do the walk. But then, um, you know, I, like just all the plans, like go out the window. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of the country, like, okay. And almost out of money, but you know, we're just going to keep going. And every time that would happen, just the most, like, I mean, people would just help out. Like, I mean, it was just the kindness of strangers was really i don't know it was like so cool that is that's awesome and i remember i don't want to i'll walk the fine line of talking about it without spoiling it so but i, I remember at one point in the documentary you were like okay i at, from this point forward no rules and i'm just gonna you know yeah. ask the universe and <laughs> and it was so cool to hear the stories that you'll have to watch the show to to find <laughs> out but but it was super cool to see that like you said, people would just um, offer money, weed, um, or... <laughs> yeah, money, <laughs> weed, a lot of weed. So much weed. <laughs> so much. All... 
how much That's we amazing. um just you know in the least expected places uh actually <laughs> I, I i remember doing um a show in uh oklahoma and oh uh-huh. actually uh, yeah i had i know i I'm, you see me on stage in the film but i don't think i say this part um but i'm saying you know i make this joke about uh how much weed i have on me but then i realized that the older couple that i'm staying with is like in the audience so i'm like just kidding <laughs> Like only kidding, uh, and, <laughs> and you know, because I can understand how people feel uncomfortable with that. They're already like having this strange comedian woman staying in their home, and now she's got like a cart full of weed in their house or whatever. Like, fine. But then, <laughs> so I get back to their house though, and um, you know, at one point there's like a knock on my door, and they're like, oh, "Jessica, we're gonna be um, smoking some marijuana if you'd like to come and <laughs> take part." And I was like, "Yes, I would. Thank you." Um, so my point, everyone smokes weed, I think. Um, That's so funny. So I love how they're just like- Anyone who would take in a comedian walking across America smokes weed, I think is the <laughs> overarching that is, message. That, that is super funny. I think it's it's should be one of those icons on those websites where like couch surfing and everything, just a little marijuana <laughs> leaf. You're so like, right. <laughs> weed no, friendly. No, no. No, but that's the point is that they're all weed friendly. Like if you are on a site like that, you are everything friendly because you're just already opening yourself up. I, you know, and I, yeah. I haven't used those sites since, but um, mm. it was a really interesting thing. I mean, I stayed with just some, as some people I don't, re- you know, I barely remember. It was like, they're like, I'll leave the key under the mat of the RV and you just go in and I would sleep and I would wake up before the sun came. I never even met the people, you know? I mean, there, there's like, I don't know, just so many different connected communities of these um, sort of mm-hmm. off-road travelers. That is so cool. And I know in the documentary, you had mentioned couch surfers. Uh, and then I was watching some of your stand-up clips online. And I don't know if you said this in the documentary, but also warm showers warm was another showers. site. Yes, warm <laughs> showers. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, yes, I know you have a great bit about that too. Uh, but what other sites were there? Because I the only one I knew was couch surfers. It, it was pretty much couch surfers. Warm showers was is a specific okay. bike is a specific biker website. But I uh, so I would have to tell people. Okay. I would have to be like, by the way. I'm not biking. I am, I am pushing. I do have wheels. I've got wheels. Like I'd have to like kind of convince them because they're like part of this like biker community. That's like, we don't know how we feel about walkers, you know? Cause oh, I, I think because it. there could be more like transient people who are you know, like walking, but if you have a bike, they're like, all right, at least you got some wheels or whatever, but it got seemed it. to work out fine. But I did, um, this was just when uh, you know, I mean, Instagram was just popping off, but uh, I used Facebook a lot. And okay. at the time, you could search. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you can anymore, but it was a, a, able where I could pull up friends that I had. And you know, like in the comedy world, you have exactly 4,473 yes. people that you don't actually know, but you're Facebook <laughs> friends with that are also comedians. And so you could search your friend group by where they're from. So I would put in like these random towns and someone would turn up who we had seven friends from a, you know, festival I did in Chicago or something. And I would message Uh them and be like, Hey, can I, do you know anyone in your hometown that I could stay with? And that was actually worked out for me many times over while I was doing it. And then that would lead to like one person telling another friend and then they would tell their other friend and the most times that that happened was seven times that I stayed with someone and then that kind of like spiraled into like other people that I could stay with which was pretty cool that is that that is really cool and um it's it just makes my heart warm to know (laughs) that people you, you know you can reach out to people and they will be there for you in in a lot of cases maybe not all but um, <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean this was just my experience you know and I yeah. you know, I think this is what we were getting at earlier and I kind of went on a tangent as I do but um all good it's a podcast that's when, what it's for <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about the sort of giving into the unknown part of it for me I mean yeah. it sounds like the most cliche thing right but it just kept coming like the mm 
moments when I, because I am a planner and like, even in doing something crazy like this, like I had my, I had things planned out and yeah, stuff went out the window, but before I would leave the town of doing stand up, I would, you know, I had things logged, like what were the miles for the next towns I'd be going to, what are possible places I could stay? Like, are there, <clears throat> are there just even a hotel that's like, okay, well, I'll spend 75 bucks and sleep in a hotel if that's where I am going to feel safest. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, every time I decided not to do that and I decided to just like, no girl, just get on the road. Cause you already need to be like up and walking and I would just go, then the coolest stuff would happen. And I, you know, and I would just stumble into a place, not only a place to stay, but like people that were being like more than gracious and like just some cool experience, like a music festival where I'd be on someone's boat or just like some weird and swimming in someone's swimming pool in their tree house. Like, I, I, I don't know, just like, yeah, it was very cool stuff. And, you know, not all of that is, captured in the film I, I was documenting for the first time in my life and it turns out after you walk like 20 miles a day the last thing you kind of want to do is film uh stuff uh <laughs> but I am you know I'm excited about the the moments that I did capture and I think you get like the essence of the whole experience for sure that's super cool and I feel I agree with that because I felt you did a real much better job than me because I can barely take pictures of experiences where my wife and I will go to the Grand Canyon. She's like, did you get a selfie? And I'm like, nope, I forgot. So I thought it was yeah. excellent. To that point, is there anything in particular that stands out where it's just this really resounding, joyous memory that that you didn't record that you wish that you could have included in the in the documentary? Um, uh, there's I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, you know, I, okay, Joyous, I don't know, but you've seen it, no spoilers, but Gary, that guy, Gary, who I met, who, all right, this is a spoiler, but Gary, just, he does one over on me, okay, yeah. um, but I am glad that I didn't film him because I, he would have seen my equipment, and he hadn't seen my equipment yet, and so I feel really oh. fortunate that I didn't film him, because that could have been, you know, like just a, like, I don't know, whatever. Yes. But, yeah. but, but I also like really wish I would have filmed Gary. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> he was such a character and just his whole mood and like me meeting him and feeling like he was kind of this savior and then him ending yeah. up like not being that. I, I, I really wish I would have <laughs> been able to <clears throat> capture that moment oh, of Gary. Gary. You know what? It's kind of cool though how you talk about him in this the documentary because I kind of get. I think maybe a lot of us have had a Gary that we just. <laughs> you know, oh, we've all had. Been on, a Gary. It's, it's been on the corner of Circle K or somewhere and just starts talking with you and. We've all had a uh, Gary, and you just let him in. You're like, this Gary <laughs> seems like a different Gary. <laughs> and no. Exactly, and then you're like, nope, Gary. No, nope, it was me the over. same Gary. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but it was uh no that that was great and i was going to oh oh and amongst all of that footage i know that this was done in 2014 and then i know you had the second kickstarter and then putting everything together yeah how i mean between the memories that you have putting the, the what was it, like 300 plus hours of footage together and then sewing it up in such this yeah. such a beautiful story what was that like and and uh, yeah I'll stop there what was that like um yeah so it's the whole project's been seven years since the inception to this completion and okay okay and and like all of that time has been built on creating that story which when I got done with the walk, um, 2015, and then I get back to New York and the editor that I've been working with, who's amazing, Lorena, she had like everything ready. And you know, she'd been waiting for me. I'd been walking for a year and then I got back and it was like, let's go, let's make this film. We watched all the footage twice, which took us more than like two months to do because 300 hours, you're watching it 40 hours a week. That's a month right there. Jeez. And then it's like, all right, you know, we have all the footage organized. We have 
this is what happened. This is what we have. These are the, these are the memories we have. This is the footage we have. These are the jokes that we want to tell. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, so what's the story, Jess? And, you know, and I didn't know, like, I did not know. And it mm -hmm. took me time to figure that out. And it took, you know, the, the film has, there's been, um, Christina is, um, Simon is the editor of the film, but there's been a few patons passed along the way and it's taken time to, to cultivate the story and what it really kind of came into. So honestly, like it, it just took, um, it took time. I don't know, like I couldn't come up with it when I first came back and I, I couldn't see what had happened and I needed space and, um, you know, that's a hard thing to come to terms with as an yeah. artist. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, things take time. And when it works out, it just comes together and it works. And I, I feel so empowered by this project because of that. Because I look at it and I go, wow, it like really came together. And I was at a loss for like a while in this seven year time period of not knowing if I was going to find the light at the end of the tunnel. So to see what it is now feels like one of those ultimate, uh, like pretty much what I learned on the walk about trusting in the unknown. And it sounds so cliche, but it's just so true. And it worked out for me really well on this project, at least. That is super cool. And it's something that I try to remind myself probably daily of surrendering. I still am. I still and am. Yeah, because, because I think maybe it's easier for some people than others, but I'm a planner. I like to make sure that I have a schedule to my day, to my week, to my month, et cetera. And so it's, it's nice sometimes to just not know how something's going to happen. If you want it, just let it happen or ask for it. And then, uh, you know, let the universe do its trick. Yeah. But. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was the amount of notebooks and Fair. tiny pieces of index cards that were spread out over my house. I guess I'm putting together some serial killer, you know, novel, <laughs> the amount of hour, you know, I have, I have every bit of the, the film, all the footage is transcribed. You know, it's like a script you go through everything's highlighted. Like I, these things that I would tools that I was given by people that I met along the way, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. filmmakers that were helping me along the way, these tools, mm -hmm. but like each time we would kind of get to a place and it would, it, the story felt like it hit a roadblock. And, um, yeah. then I brought on a story editor named Jason Welling and he really worked with me with the story and what we were able to kind of cultivate out of the, the footage that we had and the stand-up special that I had. And he was pretty much the um, producer of that uh, interview that you see that goes like the, the um, voiceover kind of that goes yeah. through the, the film. And, you know, that changed everything and it just really brought it all together. So it was a huge team effort. That's really, really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and not, not denigrating the hard work and planning that is get put into certain things too. I mean, I'm not going to let the universe decide what I'm going to get for my wife for her anniversary present. Nope. There's going to be some planning in that. So that. Uh, I, I think hard work is definitely something <laughs> that uh, pro a, a good mix too. Cause I think it's a mix. Uh, it's a mix. I mean, I, you know, you see in the film, I say like, I feel like I'm not like, <clears throat> I didn't go hard enough. And I'm like, I sleep in on a tent on the side of the road in California after I just walked 2000 miles. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing enough, you know, like, I mean, it, <laughs> it's also situational. Um, it's it, yeah. It, but the, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I don't know, we're all going to die. So what are you going to do? Exactly. I mean, if we can find any inspiration in this, we're all going to die. By the way, I did want to compliment you because I did not see you once sunburned. And I was that was the first thing that I was thinking of because my delicate white pasty skin. <laughs> it's just if a gentle smooch from the sun just turns it red. So well, I know interesting. You, you should say that because when I was watching when I watched the film, I go, I can't believe I'm not wearing more hats. I'm like, protect your skin, babe, because I'm like, now four years out I'm like oh, okay some things are happening but uh it looks great I don't know if it's the zoom enhancements it's probably but you the look... zoom enhance <laughs> I, I look nothing like this 
Um, <laughs> no, I did use I used sunblock and I had a I had a sunblock sponsor Badger sunscreen. I'd like to plug Badger sunscreen. They sent me sunscreens along. It it what I will say I applied sunscreen often. Okay. Um, but I also um, yeah I mean my I will say in general my body responded well once I got past the initial <laughs> me not training at all to walk across America. Um, yeah. my body responded <laughs> pretty well to it. Um, once I, yeah, realized like wear hats, sunglasses, sunblock and, um, and acupuncture for the, for the, I did acupuncture. And then after, and he, after, you don't see in the film that he also, uh, said I should see a, um, physical therapist. And she was like, so the thing about how you walk is that you don't do it right. So, <laughs> oh no! It was like so. That's what's happening. Oh my god! <laughs> She's like, like the way you're walking is like kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but but I've been a dancer for so long. She was like, just like pretend, like when you're walking, pretend that. And she gave me these exercises to do, and it like yeah, I mean. I got, I don't know, the way timing worked out for me in this whole scenario worked out pretty well. So thank you to acupuncture and doctors. And then also, um, yeah, the universe. And badger sunscreen. <laughs> and badger, badger. sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I had one more question about the trek that I was gonna ask. I, oh, uh, one other thing too, cause I know I had heard, I mean, throughout the documentary, you talk about it and other interviews, it's, it, it just seems like people aren't able to grasp the fact that a woman is able to mm. go and, and cross the country <laughs> with nothing, with armed with nothing more than right. bear spray, Right. which, what does bear spray look like? I don't think I've ever seen it's, bear spray. It's kind of looks like a aerosol hairspray. Okay, okay. It's about that size, like, oh, maybe like a can of spray paint. But a, but a little bit smaller. And do you spray the stuff that protects it from bears, or like if a no. bear comes, it's like mace where you just? It's mace. It's just a really intense mace. And um, so what is interesting about the bear spray is that okay. yeah, that is the one um, thing I had. I did take a I took some self defense classes before I left. Nice. One of them, she gave me a few things that she had recommended. Okay, so one of them was this little tiny box that like when the pin is released, it is like this super crazy loud alarm sound. So, you know, the idea was like, you could like put it on the zipper in your tent or you could just like have it with you. And if you, and if someone tried to attack you, you pull the pin out, you put it to their ear, it'll be like this deafening sound. Oh, okay, God. cut to, like three days into the walk, I'm like ditching things left and right. Like, all right, what can we get out of the cart? Like, I need, like, it's just like, I've got way too much stuff in this cart. And that was one of the things that I was like, we got to get rid of this. But the battery on the back is in with like a one of those little tiny screwdrivers. So I couldn't get the battery out. So I just had to like throw it away. So there's definitely an alarm going off somewhere in <laughs> Delaware. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Uh, so that was one of the things I ditched. Um, <laughs> then there's the bear spray. So the bear spray I carried on my person, like for the first okay. like few weeks, it was, it was like on my holster basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you even see it when I'm with the, the musicians, um, I'm wearing it like the whole time I'm there with them. So I'm like in this, <laughs> I'm like in their garage, like pounding Budweiser's and like Goldschlager or something or whatever we were drinking. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, I'm like, literally just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can trust you people. Like I still have the bear spray. <laughs> so cut to, I had that bear spray on me every day. Like this was all part of my regimen. I always had it there. I always had it there. When I slept, I had it beside me. When I uh -huh. just always made it sure to have it with me. The nice. last day of the walk, I'm literally getting up to get my last day and I can't find the bear spray. And I like, all of a sudden I realized I don't know where it was. And I don't remember even when I lost it. And like, I have no recollection what? of the transfer from like me needing it to be right there and then it just like i still do not know what happened to it 
And it was just like a very like interesting, you know, once again, it just kind of felt like full circle. I'm like, oh, maybe I didn't need the bear spray after all. And actually I did not know how to use the bear spray. Okay. I have <laughs> Oh no, that would be horrible if you went to spray and it accidentally turned backwards and into your, oh no. I had not practiced. Oh, but I, no. just, I just assumed I'd be able to figure it out. Like it's not. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I would have done the same thing, just like a point and spray. That's what I would have imagined. I mean, but. I, I, honestly, I thought to myself, look, if I'm sleeping on the side of the road and someone wants to come and like have a melee, it doesn't matter if I'm a dude or a girl. It doesn't matter if I have a gun or if I don't. Like, I'm kind of fucked <laughs> no matter which way it goes. So uh, I'm just going to like roll the dice and not live terrified. I, I love that. You know, we're all going to die anyway. So exactly. it's on the side of the road. It's, and if you're thinking about it, it's probably more or less likely to happen is what I kept telling myself when I was sleeping on the side of the road. Mm, so um, I was like, there's point. no, I was like, what are the odds? You know, what are the odds? It's like, yeah. You get Walking a, across America and I get murdered. Like, come on. These are, that's. Greater chance of getting bitten by a shark. Or you really, I think you do. I mean, I don't know the statistics here, but. Should have carried shark spray, actually. That would have been. <laughs> <laughs> that. So I was going to ask, did you wish you had any other weapons? But it sounds like you were good with the bear spray. And I mean, at the very end, I didn't even, you didn't need it all along. Oh, man. I mean, what was going to have a shootout with someone? I mean, honestly, like, how does that go down? I don't even, you know, like, I, it just I seems know. like that would definitely instill more fear, you know? Yeah. Um, if, if somebody pulled a gun and I was like, bear spray, I don't, yeah. Or, or if someone comes up to my tent and they're just like checking on me and I've got like a gun and I'm like, oh, oh excuse me, sir. And he's like, I just want to know if you wanted to get some of these natty lights I had. Oh, you know, you know I don't yes. know. Like it can, it can go either way. Like it can go all the ways, you know? So it just, I chose the trust method. I like that. I, worked out well this time that's very good and then, so and listeners there is at one side of the country uh the bear spray and on the other side an alarm so it's almost like a nice little scavenger <laughs> yeah, hunt exactly. <laughs> oh amazing well we're gonna wind down with a little bit with this is a comedy advice podcast we're gonna give some advice and okay. where the advice comes from the questions come from the Reddit advice column oh, or great. section. So there are some questions here. This first one, it is, <clears throat> what gift would be an awesome gift to give to a mechanic? My brother is a mechanic and his birthday is getting closer. I want to give something that he would use. He often makes maintenance in his car, electrical parts and cleaning mostly. I don't have a lot of money so that it exceeds the 200 bucks. Simple things would be great for me. Thanks for the attention. Massage. Oh, sh well, my guests usually don't get it that fast, but that was great. <laughs> great suggestion. Massage. I think he's like under a car. He's all like, eh, you know, I don't Man. know. We haven't, Maybe, all been, yeah. we haven't touched yeah. in a while, you know, the things are <laughs> like, this is really good. I think it's great. $200. You get a really good whole spot it for that. No, that's true. You can get the whole uh face mask the cucumbers <laughs> on the eyes i don't know if they still do that but damn yeah you definitely could physical therapy or or just some some deep tissue massage maybe they're yeah. like you know what you've been mechanical mechanicking wrong the whole time they give knows? them some tips to be able to Who turn knows? that wrench in a better way <laughs> mm -hmm. <That's> what <laughs> amazing <I was> saying. <laughs> yeah yeah so i think maybe that's the perfect gift for a mechanic massage I mean, I'm just thinking they they're this is a physical thing, right? I oh, mean, yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how cars work anymore, but I think um, <laughs> like I used to. I used to know how they worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know unless... if now there if it's like, but I think oh. they still have to get like under there and do stuff, right? I think yeah, unless it's like a Tesla, <laughs> then I think they have those software engineers that do a diagnostics from there. And those guys know. need massages too, probably, because that's a lot to be sitting there. And so I stick with my suggestion, yeah. massage. Either way, massage is the way to go. All right. Well, I think we massaged that question perfectly. <laughs> so we'll move on to this next one. It says, <clears throat> I know it's all right. It gets worse from, 
<laughs> this next one is how to say thank you for a raise. I started a new job about two months ago where during the interview process, I was told not to sweat your starting pay too much because as long as you're a good employee, manager's generous with raises. Mm. Lo and behold, today I received an email from the manager saying I'm now making a dollar more than I was. She informed me of this over email and now I'm struggling with how to say thank you. I very much appreciate it, but I don't want to overdo it with the thanks because I have still just started working there and I don't want her to think that I'm necessarily satisfied. What would be the best way to respond? I'm going to go with a massage. I, I, I was going to say the same thing. Go like personally go over there and be like, thank you <laughs> so much. Okay. Go pay for the massage. We're okay. going to need a paid massage. But um, clearly I've never worked in a new corporate environment because I'm like a dollar. <laughs> that sounds pretty great. Is that, <laughs> is that not a lot? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I think maybe if you go over there and do like a verbal thank you, you could do just like an email thank you where it's like, thanks. And so that's like, okay, I appreciate you, but yeah. I want more. And, and I do like if you, um, those words are going to be read into. So how you just said, thanks, you know, it wasn't like, thank you. It was like, thank, thanks. Yeah. I think that's the impression you want to get. You want to get a little bit in their head, you know, and just make them go like, was it a, was that a thank you? Or was that they want more is the vibe. It I would think that you're trying to cultivate. That's what I think too. And if you want, just ignore them for three days and then then send them the, the email. Or do you go the other way? Do you get overly, thank you so, so much oh. for the generous raise. For the $1 raise. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, yeah, I'm, I just never had a real job. So I'm bad at um, probably bad at this. So don't ask me for this advice, but I would, yeah, I'd probably go to her house, knock on the door and ask her what's up, you know? <laughs> I like that. That's and I, pretty and good. And I said, don't take my advice on this. No, I mean, that's, that's wonderful that I have a disclaimer at the very start of the episode. Okay, so great, great. This is, this is fantastic. All right. Well, well, I think we can raise our glasses because that's the end of the podcast. Jessica, first off, Thank you so much for joining, talking about your new documentary and giving some great advice that shouldn't be followed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, like absolutely do not follow my advice. But if you do, tag me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do not follow Jess's advice, but follow Jess on Instagram. Where, By the way, where else? What have you got to plug? Um, well, where can people follow you? What have you got going on? The biggest plug right now is this film I made about walking across America, uh, which is available on a bunch of streaming platforms right now. Xbox, Google Play, um, Vudu, Amazon, iTunes, and uh, streaming services. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok uh, at a Ooh. Jessica <laughs> Watkins. And then you can find my my film there too, which is Jessica Watkins Specialish. And it, I hope you all watch it. Amazing. And guess what, guys? You don't even have to go search that far. You just scroll down with your little thumb, your cute little thumbs, go into the show notes and the links will all be right there. So you can just go there, watch the, watch the documentary. I keep wanting to call it a special. I'm so sorry. It is. It is. It's a comedy special and it's a documentary. And that is why it's called Special-ish. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, so watch the special documentary. It's amazing. <laughs> Follow Jess, support her, give her some love. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Oh, it was a blast. And that is the episode. What a trek. What a safari. Wow. The wildlife bits that we saw and heard. Amazing. Glorious. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for finishing with me because I feel like that doesn't often happen. Some people, they just finish halfway through and they leave and they don't call, and it's horrible. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. Thank you so much. Send some love to Jessica. Her links are in the show notes to follow her, DM her, uh, tweet her, whatever you want to do. Don't be, just don't be creepy about it, please. Be creepy with me. That's fine. I'm okay with it. Um, I've seen it all before. Maybe not. I don't know. Challenge me. Show me something new. Uh, please don't. No, please don't. But show me some love. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Comment. Uh, subscribe to my new YouTube 
channel. You can see me in person. And that's pretty much it. Watch Specialish. And and most importantly, have a pleasant day. Have a pleasant weekend if it's a Friday. Have a pleasant week if it's, oh my God, if it's a Monday. Ugh, listen to more episodes to get you through that week. And that is it, guys. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Or I don't know what the guidelines are anymore. Touch your, grope your face, whatever you want to do, just in the safety of your own home. Just don't grope your face in public. That's weird. All right. Gooch smooch. Love y'all.